What's up, YouTubers? So today I got a uh, new welder to share with you guys. Now, if you watched uh, my channel at all recently, I had made a post that I found this on a pretty good deal and listed the place I got it from and the price and all that. And if you didn't see it, I don't blame you. I don't really look at those kind of posts anyways, but I just thought uh, I'd mention it. But I got this thing from welding supplies from IOC, I think it is. I'll put a link in the description. These things are selling there for like 575 bucks with a coupon plus, or 550, somewhere around there, plus tax and free shipping. And then on top of that, they have a $150 mail-in rebate through the Firepower Company. So this 200 amp MIG welder that's actually really decent is only gonna cost you somewhere, depending on your taxes, somewhere around 440 to 470 bucks. So very little out the door. I mean, you can't even get a Harbor Freight welder that's 140 amp for that. So quite a good deal. And for those that don't know, Firepower, this unit is basically the same as the ESOB 210 EM, which sells for like $1,000. And ESOB, I believe they merged or bought out Firepower, whatever, they're getting rid of them. They're fire sailing all the crap off. And you're basically able to get an $1,100 ESOB welder for 450 bucks after rebate. You can't beat it, like honestly. So I thought, well, I actually don't have a MIG welder. I've had a bunch of emails and people sending me <laughs> messages saying, why don't you do MIG? Why don't you do MIG? I'm sick of stick. I'm sick. Well, I'm going to do it. It's still going to be a week. Well, more than a week, probably two weeks before I can get into this and do start doing some wire welding videos again. But you're, you're just going to have to have some patience. But I thought, why not uh, open this up together? We can look at it. There's already some, uh, where was it? <laughs> UPS special box damage. Hopefully everything's all right inside, but you never know. But uh, let's get into it and see what this comes with for uh, 450 bucks. And I need to work out more. No spring chicken anymore. All right. Well, that's good. The mandatory UPS box damage did not seem to hit anything on this. So, at least that I've seen so far. Nice cord on this thing. And it's got like a, just like my Miller Dynasty, a nice plug retainer on that or a cord retainer. Cool. All right. Oh, shit. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely need to start working out some more because for being 30 pounds, supposedly, that thing seems way heavier than that. Well, let's see what we got in here. Huh. Came with uh, pretty standard wire. Ah, decent ground clamp, nothing too special. This looks just like the adapter for 110 that came with, uh, I used to own an ESOB Rogue, the little stick welder. All right. And this looks very similar to the gun that I had a ESOB 205 ACDC all-in-one. This looks very similar to the gun for that. Might be the same, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, not bad. I guess I'm going to take all this stuff out of the plastic, get it set up on the table, and take a closer look. So I looked up uh, online this MIG gun, it's a 180 amp version. The 205 ACDC machine I had had a Tweeko 200. It looks the same, but it's probably a little bit different, which 
I mean, that's fine. 180 amp MIG guns more than enough. I'm probably rarely ever going to run anywhere, you know, at the 200 amp capacity. So being that it's a little smaller gun, it might handle the heat a little bit less. But yeah, um, comes with a pretty standard regulator, like the big knob on it. I use flow meters around the shop here, so this will probably go in a box where it'll collect dust. But uh, it's actually pretty decent. It's better than most of the gauge style ones that I've got with welders in the past. Comes with an extra drive roll knurled, so that's for flux core wire. The ground cable is, uh, if I can get it separated there. One thing I like with ESOB is, and a lot of other companies don't, they use the big DINs connector. So this is the DINs 3550 or whatever it is. It's like a half inch DINs. These things are far less likely to break off because of the big mounting uh, nuts and everything on the inside of the machines. The, the little DINs 25, I think they're called, where they're 3 8 or maybe they're smaller than that. Those things, um, I don't know, I've had some bad luck with those. Ground clamp, this thing's got a pretty heavy duty spring. For the sake of what we got going on here, I'm sure it'll work fine. I'm not too worried about it. Another thing I like about ESOB's products, they, they come up like the best hoses. Like this thing is like um, almost like Goodyear rubber hose versus like the hard plastic cheap hoses a lot of the other ones come with. So I've always liked their ho hoses. And uh, yeah, this is branded ESOB. So yeah, it's pretty short though. I mean, your gas bottle's got to be pretty close. I mean, I normally run my gas bottles a little further away from the welders just for space. So that might not be long enough, but I got extras. One thing I'll say, and I'll open this up, I'm not a huge fan of the way that ESOB does tip retention, and I'm sure that this is the same. So with this setup, I believe the nozzle holds the contact tip in, and it does. So if you look here, this is held in place by this nozzle. The issue I have with that is because it doesn't thread in, if you switch and run flux core with this gun, you have to use this big nozzle on it. And one of the benefits I like with flux core wire welding is that you can see better. Like you see how big this nozzle is? Well, if you're welding in a tight spot or something, like this obs obscures your view. And not only that, it might prevent you from getting the gun in, especially like on underneath a car or something. So I, I, the tip retention, the contact tip, I never really liked with the Tweco guns. I like the screw-in style better, but you know, what are you going to do? I mean, it's, it's fine. It'll work for what I'm doing. One thing to note that I like too, if you look at where the contact tip is, it's at the end of the nozzle. It's very common with uh, cheaper guns, and this I wouldn't really call a cheap gun. This is a pretty expensive gun, much better than you get on Harbor Freight, no offense to them, and because I do like their, their welders, a lot of them. But you want the nozzle here, focus. You want the nozzle to be level with the tip because your contact tip to work distance needs to be about three-eighths of an inch. Well, what you'll find with a lot of cheaper guns is this contact tip is like way back in the nozzle. So in order to keep the proper stick out, you literally almost have to have the nozzle touching your plate. And that can cause all sorts of issues with the way that it welds because you want the proper stick out. So this, they've, ESOB's always been pretty good about keeping that at the same height where you don't have to sand or cut down, file that nozzle down. But yeah, this gun feels really good. Like I said, it's just like the one I had on my ESOB 205. So um, I have no doubt that this will last a good long while without any issues. It does come with, uh, let's see here, spare tips probably of different sizes. Oh, put that back up before it falls on the floor. And some O-rings for the part that goes into the welder of the end of the whip. Um, I guess I'm going to reposition the camera. Let's take a look at the, the inside of it and 
I'll probably power it up and we'll look at it. All right, so back here we have the gas hookup. It's got a little cap on it. Power switch here. Now, I actually fired this thing up already and it said air VOL and I'm like, oh my God, this thing dead on arrival. Like I had that happen with my other, my Miller welder. And I'm like, how many welders can I buy and have them not work out of the box? But back here is a switch that you have to flip if you're running on 220 versus 110. I didn't see that back there. So I shut it off, flipped it, and now it works fine. So it was just a voltage selection. That's something new. I've never had a dual voltage welder that didn't automatically detect a voltage. Not a big deal, but it's there. I will say this 220 cord that it has is stupidly long. Like it's probably the longest cord I've ever had on a welder. I mean, it's like, I don't know, maybe nine, 10 feet. So that's pretty nice. Now, like most MIG welders, it's got a nice little handy chart inside of here, which is good. The ESOB Rebel series, which I'm a huge fan of, has a nice software setup to where you can just select what thickness and whether or not you want the weld hot or cold and it does everything for you. And that works really good because, you know, I'll be honest, I'm not a MIG welder. I've done very, very little MIG welding in my life. I'm all TIG and some stick, like TIG is my, is my go-to. So this is gonna kind of be a fun experience for me because like I said, I, I don't really MIG weld that much. And of course, you know, you've seen my flux core. I do a fair amount of flux core welding, just not short circuit MIG. But yeah, so the chart's handy. You definitely want to use that to get your settings within the ballpark. Now this is set up to run the little two pound spools or the bigger, I don't know, eight or 10 pound, whatever the bigger than two pound spools are. It has a single, well, it's a double drive roller. I don't know that both sides are actually powered, probably not. My guess is only one side of it uh, is driven and the other one's an idler. And as a matter of fact, yeah, this is just a bearing here. So it's, it's got a driven and then an idler, which is fine. Looking at this, I mean, it's pretty typical again of a MIG machine. It does have, you probably can't see it in here, a manual feed button. Hopefully that's a cold feed. If not, it really doesn't matter. But yeah, I mean, this isn't like any industrial duty stuff, but uh, overall the build quality looks pretty good. I mean, honestly, for $450, I, I can tell you already, you're not gonna find a better MIG welder for that money than this thing. And the only reason it is that price is because they're clearancing them out. Another thing I like, so the older, like everyone has the 140 amp Lincolns and even the Millers, the older uh, transformer MIG welders. Well, when you switch on those between a polarity of DCEN, if you're doing flux core to DCEP with short circuit MIG, you have to unbolt a nut and change a bus bar in the panel. And I always thought that was annoying, which is why I'm glad on the newer welders like this, the polarity you weld on is selected by where you hook this up. So you put the ground on the other one, and then if you say you put the ground on a positive, th this goes to the MIG whip to do negative for like flux cord, and then you reverse it for MIG. So you don't have to go in there and take nuts out or any of that BS. It's a lot easier to deal with. Um, but I'll power it up and we'll just go through some menus. This doesn't seem to have much. The fan's actually pretty quiet. It might sound louder than it really is. If, I assume that's full on so the fan doesn't like auto adjust and that's pretty quiet. It's actually quieter than my Miller Dynasty is, provided that's on high. So this machine does uh, do a spool gun, which I don't have that controller hooked up so I can't even select the spool gun mode. Beyond that, uh, it has an induction setting. I'll get in future videos, I'll talk about what that is. 2T, so the trigger is in where you pull the trigger and when you release it, it stops. If you put it in uh, 4T, when you press it and release it, it stays feeding wire. So it just allows you to weld like a really long weld without holding the trigger. Yeah, so we got induction, trigger. So that's what's selected there. 
This does have burn back control. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure how you access that, but to control how much of the wire burns back to the tip when you're done, it probably increases the voltage at when you release the trigger just to burn some of the wire back. I'm not quite sure how to pull it up. Otherwise, you have your uh, voltage and then your wire feed speed. Unlike most cheap MIG welders that just have like A, B, C, D, E, and then one, two, three, four to maybe 10, this you actually adjust the parameters directly, which is good because that's one thing I'm not really good at. Like if you were to ask me what settings MIG should be at for a certain plate, certain wire, I have no idea. I'll base my, when I get to welding with it, using a chart, I'll be able to read a weld and tell if it's hot or cold and adjust, but I don't memorize any of this because the only MIG welding I generally ever do is with those old school machines, so I just don't know. Yeah, um, I guess I'll get the MIG whip into this thing, and I'll show you how I did that, just because if you damage the O-rings, you can uh, have gas leaks, you don't want that. But yeah, why don't we get that installed? So this is one of those things you probably should read the manual because there may be some special procedure, but I'm just going to wing it and hope for the best. So the inner liner on this gun is it pretty much flush. I am looking, it's I'm be impossible for you to see it on the camera, but the little liner has like a little sharp edge there. I'm just making sure that it's not going to catch the wire but uh, this thing should just slip right in through the front. Now, I believe there's a wing nut here or something I'm going to have to remove, which is, and actually it is in the retracted position, so we're good. If you look here, there's a double O-ring and then the gas port. So this has a gas solenoid in it, and that solenoid opens when you press the trigger, and then it goes uh, from your gas tank, your argon CO2 mix, and flows through the machine, through the solenoid, and then goes through this gas port into the MIG whip all the way to the nozzle and then diffuses through there. So these O-rings are very important. If you nick these during the install, or if they're just old and cooked, because a lot of current passes through this, because this has to pass current as well, uh, these can become brittle and leak, and then the gas ends up leaking out here rather than at the nozzle and you don't want that so i'm going to put a little spit on these just to lube them up a little bit i'd be careful using like petroleum and stuff that may deteriorate it i have no idea what these o-rings are made out of but i'm going to look uh this hole right here i believe this wing nut threads in so i'm going to kind of push it in there and set it up yeah and that's a pretty tight fit which is what you want if it pops in there loose, something's wrong. And then hopefully thread this wing nut with the shaft in and it catches that hole, maybe. Huh. It should be aligned here. Now well, I'm gonna just pull it out and make sure that I guess it just sits in that divot. So once you tighten it, as long as it can't turn, you should be good. Yeah, and that seems pretty good. Yeah, I can't twist it at all. And then you have your MIG whip, the controller, which is just a simple two-prong contact so when a switch completes the circuit it just feeds a wire you thread that on there now i actually don't have a uh, mig mix for gas so you can either use 100 percent co2 which i have some tanks around of that but not of the proper tanks to be hooking a welder so I'm gonna have to pick up a uh, C25. I prefer to MIG weld when I have with C25, which is 75% argon, 25% CO2. So all I, I do have flux core that I can try this welder out with, which I probably r will run a couple beads with the flux core, but it's gonna be at least a week, week and a half before I can get a, 
a tank of uh, C25. I actually did have a tank of C25, but I gave it to a buddy of mine who just bought a welder very similar to this one actually, and he needed some help and whatnot, so I, I just actually gave him the tank that I had to help him out, so that's kind of why I don't have one. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna just pre-wire it on the MIG whip on negative just because I will run some flux core as a test. But yeah, this appears to be in there and good. Now I'll turn it back on and I'm gonna pull the trigger and see if uh, the mechanism spins here like it should. Whoop. Yeah, I can hear the solenoid clicking to let gas through, which it's not hooked to gas, and everything seems to move, so I think we are good in that respect. Shut that off again. So yeah, I guess uh, I'll go set this up and set it up on the workbench up there. Put a spool of flux core on it and uh, we'll do a couple just test welds to end this video. I wasn't planning on doing any welding, but why not? Um, I'll use a roll of flux core wire I already have rather than the stuff it came with. All right, a couple things here I want to mention really quick because I was an idiot. <laughs> so the little mini spools, there's a little black plastic spacer, which I thought that went out here. But no, it goes on the back side of this to space the roller out so that the wire's in line with the feed. So make sure you, if you're using these mini spools, make sure that that's on the inside. The second thing is, and I didn't make the mistake, I actually set it up right. You wanna use the knurled drive roller for running flux core. And when you pull this little cap that holds the roller on, when you look at the roller, whatever the roller says when it's installed is what the inner diameter is so like right now it says 030 that's what the inner one that runs that the wire runs on is running on so whatever wire you're running make sure it says it on the outside of the roller other than that i left the tension adjuster where it is ideally if you run too much tension you'll end up crimping the wire and you can get undesirable effects and wear out your motor and stuff with flux core so I left it at the factory setting. It's probably all right. One thing that we can do to test it is to uh, put the gun up to like a piece of wood like this table and see if the roller slips. So I'll do that now. I'll power it up and we'll look. Actually, I'll use this just to show you. So... little bit too much tension. I'm going to lower it a little bit. I can lower it a little bit more. Oh, right there should be good. All you're looking for is that it barely curls the wire over. It should slip. Yeah, and it's barely pushing it now, so we're good. All right, let's do some welding. All right, I'm running 030 flux core. The machine said the values are 17 and a half for voltage, 250 for wire speed. I have no idea if that's even close. Because like I said, I generally wire weld with machines that don't have specific voltage. So... I'll run a test weld and we'll look at it. Oh, help if I hook the ground cable up, wouldn't it? What would a welding video be without me forgetting to put the ground on? <laughs> Thank you. 
start was a little bit cold, but then uh, once it ran in, not bad. I think, so it has adjustable run-in. I think that needs to be adjusted a little bit. Seems to be maybe that it's putting too much wire in too fast, but let me run another one. looking pretty good let me wire rush it let's take a look at what we got here so this was my first weld and then my second one seems to be slightly on the hot side I mean I use the low end of the settings they recommended and this is uh, eighth inch, and it's got this heat sink on the back here to help. So I would say the settings are close. They probably will favor the hot side, at least for flux core from what I'm seeing. And one of my viewers had mentioned that because he bought the same welder, said that the seemed to run hot compared to his other welder that he had. And I, I would tend to agree, at least from these two welds, for being on the lower end of things, I would say it's a little bit hot, but that's all right, I like welding hot. So, awesome. I'm not gonna be doing any test welds or anything beyond that. I think we all got the idea here. Welder seems to work good, it's smooth. It's pretty quiet. I mean, I'm shouting now a little bit just because I have no idea how the audio is gonna sound. But it's, it's quieter than my Dynasty running full bore with a fan. So that's good. Um, I like it so far, I'll tell you what. For the 450 bucks after rebate, you're not going to get much better of a welder. I don't, I don't even think it exists out there. Even used, I couldn't find a decent wire welder. Because I know you guys have been on my case, some of you, and you know who you are about doing wire welding because you want to learn that. And I'm going to get to it. You know, now that I got a machine that I can do it with, I definitely will get to it because I want to help you guys out building stuff and learning. So, anyways, thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you got any comments, questions, concerns, you know where to leave them. Otherwise, until next time.